Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars on a, you know, look, it's definitely cooler. The weather is changing a bit. You know, it's claiming 73 degrees. Uh, but the truth is, I just photographed this thing extensively uh, to put up on Bring a Trailer, and I'm dripping. I'm dripping, and I don't think it's just the narcotics and whiskey. I'm pretty sure that there's some humidity in the air, and they're, they're really not where we should be for this time of year. So, yeah, we're getting to the point where I might not be able to complain so much about the weather, uh, but it's any day now when I know they're going to come out with that, oh, we're expecting an unusually warm winter this year, and uh, I'm just going to be miserable again. So we'll see. We'll see. But look, the, the core of it right now is that the weather's a little bit better. The mornings seem to be a little bit cooler, as do the evenings. And uh, with any luck, that's going to continue. And we'll, you know, we'll get one of those rare freezing winters that I love so much. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, quick news, uh, Chris, worst human on earth, not moving in next door. Apparently, that was some kind of a psych out. Uh, so thank God. I mean, I was absolutely in terror of that. Uh, it would be, you know, having the worst neighbor on earth, without any question, the worst person who could be next to you. Uh, but it turns out that he's not doing it, and that makes life pretty good. That said, look, we're going to leap directly into this thing for a couple of reasons. One, it's an IROC Z, and I recently did one. I have my own little IROC Z project going. It's an 89 350. It was a little bit rough. I've been putting it together. Uh, once it's completely done, I'll do a finalized video on it. But that was, I don't know, what, six, seven months ago. Uh, and I went over IROCs probably fairly well. So I don't really think I need to uh, to jam too much on this one. We'll, we'll just make it like basically a bring a trailer video so uh, the people bidding on that site can have a look at this car and think, wow, what the hell is this guy rambling on about for 25, 30 minutes? But yeah, what the hell, we're going to keep going with it. Uh, I've also done a few, in fact, one of the Z28s I did before had the goats. If you remember Peter's insane goats, uh, they were all over the place during that one. And I'll post a link to it below. Uh, but, um, you know, fortunately, those things are long gone. They've been turned into dinner. They've, you know, served with mint jelly and and uh, Peter won't admit it. But yeah, they're long gone. And uh, anyway, here we're going to dive directly right into this one. So look, this is a 1985 Chevrolet Camaro Z28 with the IROC Z package. Uh, that would change in a couple of years, but in 85 that was true. It was a Z28 and uh, the IROC Z was an extra package. Uh, I was a kid. I was within breathing distance of getting my license. I mean, it was the most exciting thing to me that I could fathom. It was on the way. I was, eh, well, what, 14? When I was 15, I could get a learner's permit, which, by the way, is completely insane, because me at 15 and whatever the hell car, even if it had 80 horsepower, I would have been ridiculous, and I was on cue to get a, you know, 300 horsepower 79 formula. My parents had already, we, it was a long story, but we'd already bought it, and it was in the garage, and it was pure torture walking around that thing. Couldn't drive it, had to get on the big yellow limo uh, to go to school knowing that I had that in the garage. But anyway, that was it. It was 85. Uh, Gorbachev came to power in the Soviet Union. If you remember him, the birthmark guy, I hope... Uh, you know, the Gen Zers still know their history a little bit, but there was a guy with a birthmark and the American press loved him and, you know, he was a arch rival to uh, Reagan and there was even a Genesis video where they kind of fought each other physically, but uh, Gorbachev, I don't know, he had a wife, Riza, they went shopping in New York. Uh, they seemed like decent people, but it didn't work out. Uh, also, the French sank a Greenpeace ship, uh, the Rainbow Warrior. They just put it on the bottom of the sea. You have to love the French for that. They really don't screw around those people. Uh, new Coke was released, uh, which, of course, obviously went over very, very poorly. Uh, that didn't work for them at all. And Michael Jordan uh, was the Rookie of the Year in the NBA. Uh, men, they wanted to be like David Hasselhoff, and women were wearing shoulder pads, 
and more or less it was just peak 1980s and uh, this car was released in the middle of that right upon the world and it worked well so anyway look this bitch and Camaro and it is a bitch and Camaro is an 85 Z28 with the IROC Z package and it was the first year for that trim designation and very much unlike the RS, SS, and Z28, which was used extensively across many generations, including today, uh, the IROC package ran for just five years and only during one designation, this, uh, sorry, only one, one generation, the uh, third gen uh, Camaros won't see a new IROC today and of course there's a reason for that but it was the coolest ride there was for the Gen Z youth set and I remember it well because I was one of them and uh, it was just you know you'd everybody wanted one of these things desperately absolutely desperately if you drove one in high school you were a superstar uh, but it eventually became a victim of its own success you know they made a bunch of them they were all over the place and well, we'll get into that, but it was uh, it was very very cool in 1985. It was something that everybody wanted, and uh, it unfortunately got reduced to the stuff of mullets and jacked up drag racers and primer with keystones and N5015s and you know rides to the winger concert. Uh, but that came later. Uh, it's coming back hard now on the collector market more than doubling the value of its contemporary C4 Corvettes. I mean, literally doubling it. And I think there's a good reason for that. I mean, for one, it's a tremendously good looking car and the design has held up really well today. Uh, it's very well engineered, uh, certainly for the time, and very fun to drive. And frankly, most of them uh, were chewed up and left for dead when they became cheap. Uh, you know, a lot of people bought them and just ruined them. Uh, so, you know, the really good ones are actually pretty rare today, even though they were made fairly prolifically back during the day. Uh, it starts with the end of the malaise era in the 1970s and the beginning of the sort of computerized and high-tech 1980s. You know, you remember Knight Rider with the digital dash and, you know, basically every Buick or Oldsmobile you went out and bought had a digital dash. Uh, the Datsuns of the time, the t I mean, my God, were they all very electronic and that was just a big deal. I did a video once on a... Uh, I want to say it was an 84 Camaro Berlinetta, and it even has the moniker the Starship Camaro because it was so digitized and so crazy. But of course, that was the 1980s when computers were coming in, modernity felt like the moment of the times and you know people were looking forward instead of backward uh, American cars sort of began to look more European less bling less of that 70s person and luxury stuff with the chrome and the opera windows and the wire wheels and uh, much more subdued on the outside and the inside and with that horsepower started creeping back which gets us into the story of this car and manufacturers were learning how to sort of deal with the federal emissions standards that had choked performance through the 1970s. I mean, it drove, you know, gone were these insane 69 muscle cars, and they were replaced with these mid-70s huge V8 person and luxury cars that have like 110 horsepower. I mean, emissions just absolutely threw the uh, American automakers for a loop. They couldn't get their heads around them, and it didn't work very well. Uh, but by the time the early 80s rolled around, that was changing, and they were figuring things out, and they were getting things done. So uh, with horsepower came the horsepower wars. The Camaro's arch rival, arch enemy, the Ford Mustang, they got their GT package going, and that was a pretty big deal. Uh, it was up and running, and Chevy had the Z28, uh, and it was everywhere. You know, Buick had the, the well, they had the T-Type early on. It became the Grand National, I believe, in 85, so same year as this. Uh, that's another holy grail 80s muscle car, and Pontiac had the Trans Am, the Formula, uh, Buick, uh, yeah, again, the Regal T-Type. Olds had the Hurst. Olds with the lightning rod shifters. A friend of mine had one of those that I absolutely loved. And, uh, of course, the 442 Cutlass. And even Chrysler was souping up 
uh, the sportier of its K-car platforms with turbos, you know, the Daytonas and whatnot. And uh, of course, Shelby was teamed up with uh, Chrysler at that point. So uh, it basically ended a decade or more long drought on the uh, muscle car rivalries, and it started up again. And the IROC, this car, released in 85, was a significant upgrade to GM's arsenal. Uh, you know, that say 82, they had the uh, Z28, 83, they came out with the HO engine, which was a great engine, uh, but bloody Ford kept coming up with, you know, more crap for their Mustang that made it always faster in the quarter mile, and it was just driving GM crazy, and uh, the IROC was the start of the answer to that. Uh, it got factory 16-inch rims, it had a TPI system, you see that on the back bumper, uh, tune port injection. Uh, that was taken straight off the Corvette and uh, put, and then the Corvette had a 350, this only had a 305, uh, and uh, aluminum heads versus cast iron heads, but it was still uh, the injection system for the Corvette, and it worked out really well and definitely upped the power and seemed very, very modern at the time. Uh, it also got Bilstein shocks, it got a lower ride height, uh, it got uh, sort of a stripe and decal package, more identifiably 1980s than like a piano key necktie. I mean, uh, the IROC Z logo on the side of this thing looks like it was printed out by a, you know, 1980s supercomputer or something. Uh, and while I'm talking about cars being more subdued in the 1980s, you still did have these sort of crazy decal packages on these things, but they were different. They were different from what was out in the 70s. Uh, I think they looked a little bit more subdued while at the same time being very, very cool. And uh, anyway, you, you be the judge. I, I think it does. I think it works very well. Fast forward again to 1985, and even though the Mustang was still faster, uh, the IROC Camaro had the look and style. I mean, it was lower, it was sleeker, uh, it was more impactful on the boulevard. When you pulled up in this thing, it, you know, everybody thought it was just the coolest shit they'd ever seen. It had a tremendous curb impact. And I read somewhere, if there weren't all these four and six cylinder sort of base model Camaros running around, and if these cars weren't so prolific, if they didn't make and sell so many of them, if they were as rare as Ferraris, uh, GM could have charged a hundred grand for them and people would have believed it. I mean, the look was just that modern and that cool at the time, and it worked that well. Uh, the IROC name itself came, it was called the International Race of Champions, and that was dreamed up by uh, a guy named Roger Penske, who's obviously no stranger to anyone who knows motorsports or cars. And it was this, you know, a series where it pitted a bunch of drivers from all the different fields of motorsports. You know, even NHRA, uh, Indy, Formula One, NASCAR, uh, all of it. They put them all in identical cars, which of course happen to be Chevy Camaros, or more or less. Chevy Camaro bodies over sort of NASCAR frames and engines, but they were all supposed to be equal. And at the end of the day, the driver's skill uh, would win the day, not the car. And you'd see who was the best driver out of all these guys. And uh, it worked out well. It was great panache for the car. It worked perfectly, even though, of course, the streetcar was much different. And uh, people sort of loved it. And that whole thing about win on Sunday, sell on Monday, yeah, it worked out pretty good. Um, Chevy lost that in 1990. They only got to have it for five years, and then Chrysler took it over. And there were a couple of IROC Daytonas, and uh, I actually did a review on one. I'll post a link to that on, you know, below as well. Uh, but by that time, you know, it really didn't benefit Chrysler all that much. They didn't sell that many of these things. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it, the IROC name was certifiably Camaro at that point and has been ever since sealed in time. Look, the sun's coming out and kind of screwing up the video, so I'm going to take a quick break, try to move it somewhere in the shade, and uh, then we'll keep going. So bear with me one moment. All right, so let's get into this particular car. Very quickly, you can always tell when Peter's out of town because his kid, uh, who's a very nice young man, but an obvious total snowflake, is supposed to keep the grass mode 
nice and clean and tight, and he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, he's off doing whatever these, you know, sort of snowflake kids do, which is, you know, ignore the hot chicks they're lucky enough to be around to play video games instead, or, you know, whatever the hell it is. And uh, Peter's yard goes to hell. So here I am, you know, looking like I'm in the middle of a jungle, you know, trying to do this thing. But again, at least the goats aren't around, and that's the most important thing. But anyway, look, we're going to jump right into this. So this is a, a 85 IROC Z. Again, it's finished in yellow gold, which was a pretty rare color. Uh, you know, it's hard to get uh, production numbers out of shed, specific production numbers. They made 450, uh, 4,599 Camaros in yellow gold, and that encompasses all of them, not just IROCs. You know, that's Berlinetta's base models with the Iron Duke, uh, Z28's without the IROC package, uh, and, you know, more than double or triple that in red. So this was a pretty rare color. Uh, it was also used in their advertising campaign, and I think it looks terrific, and it's held up well today. Uh, the IROC Z itself was a $696 option package. I mean, that's what, honestly, like an ashtray delete package costs today. But uh, anyway, you could buy a standard Z28, but for an extra basically 700 bucks, you could have an IROC. And uh, that included an upgraded suspension with a lower ride height. It had these very, very cool 16 by 8 inch five spoke wheels that were even stamped front and rear because they were, uh, you know, riding unidirectional tires and had different sizes. They were very cool. And it was a big deal at the time that I remember well. Uh, they had Goodyear Eagle Gator back tires back then, same as on the Corvette. Uh, the Mustang was faster in a straight line, but the IROC was a much more complete package. It was balanced well. It looked better. It looked sleeker. Uh, it was much newer at the time. And uh, it was better on the skid pad. It had faster times on the track by far and much better braking but you get in a straight line you know you get in the stoplight to stoplight race and the Mustang would take it and that really pissed Chevy off and they'd have to respond later with uh, uh, a 350 IROC and uh, a five-speed. They couldn't put a five-speed in these cars because they just didn't have one uh, that would fit and handle the torque of the engine. Uh, and of course the you know the, the the Mustang was carbureted, it had a holly on it. This thing has this real fancy computer-controlled TPI system from the Corvette. Uh, it was just a much more technologically advanced car at the time. You know, you've got these sort of stroked, uh, straight hood vents, movers, very cool. Uh, there was talk they wouldn't make it from the, you know, show car into the production car, but they did. Uh, but not um, not functional. The earlier Z28s could get functional hood scoops. These things just look cool. Uh, you've also got these sort of black uh, headlight buckets, which look tremendously neat with the hood that comes over the top, giving them kind of a droopy eyelid look. Very racy. A whole different front end effect. Uh, with fog lights, the Camaro logo, this was all pure IROC. Uh, the striping, very cool, right at the baseline, right over the uh, cladding, the ground effects at the bottom, which again looked terrific. Uh, that IROC Z thing, which is, you know, faded in, very computer looking, very 1980s, and it, again, it just looks like something like super computer. The Whopper from uh, th that, that movie with uh, What's His Face would have made something like that on the screen. It just looks cool as hell. Uh, there you see the Z28 tune port injection on the side. In later years, the IROC became the Z28. There was no more uh, package on it. It was just, you know, went from the Camaro to the IROC. I think it's kind of neat having the Z28 as the uh, IROC package. In fact, in 86, there was a new emission standard uh, that took about 25 horse off this thing. So the 85s have more horsepower and are considered more car than the 86s, and that was rectified in 87, uh, but it did piss off a lot of people in 86. Uh, back in 85, the car magazines absolutely loved this thing. Car and Driver said it was the best handling car in America. Uh, it was 
you know, it was just a very, very neat piece that ruled the boulevard at the time. Uh, the, you see the taillights, the segmented uh, squares look very cool, and again, part of that sort of 80s thing. Um, I'll get into the trunk here. You can see it has an antique plate on there, which absolutely devastates me. I mean, <laughs> just devastates me. I'm not going to say this car feels new to me, uh, but the idea that it's an antique... Oh, God. Uh, the license plate folds down where you would almost expect a gas cap, like you would have had on the second gen F body. Uh, but here it just reveals a key slot, which we're going to use and have a look inside. So you had a very nice hatch in this one, a nice lot of room, and that rear seat folded down for even more cargo. Uh, you see the sort of deep well there at the back. Uh, in my day, God, I sound like Grandpa Simpson, but in my day, kids used that to put uh, Stillwater designed subwoofers in or any other variety. They fit very nicely in the back and uh, they uh, did uh, create the base. Uh, you also had this neat little pocket here in the back. There's no glove box up front. There's a center console compartment, but no glove box. But they did give you this thing as a place to put your, you know, your narcotics or weapons or whatever else it is you needed to drive around with. A uh, guy who owns this thing has some Chevy floor mats in there, uh, which are fine. You know, they are what they are. Uh, everything looking good back there. And, uh, you know, this is a neat car to drive because it's a true 50,000 mile example uh, that's obviously been garaged and well preserved with original paint and original interior. And uh, it takes me back to where, you know, I feel what it was like to drive one of these things in the 1980s. Very, very cool stuff. Put that down and have a look under the hood. Uh, this back glass, by the way, was very new. This car was a departure. It really owed nothing to earlier gen Camaros. I mean, the uh, second gen did have sort of a bubble back window by the end, but nothing like this. I mean, it was taking advantage of this new production method that let them make very complex glass. And uh, this was indeed very complex, uh, complex glass. I like the way there's no window frames and proper, uh, you know, muscle car stuff. Nothing to uh, screw up the package. Pop the, uh, pop the hood there and have a look under the hood. I don't know. I do love these things. I have to admit it. They're, they, you know, it, Pontiac had the Firebird GTA, and that might have had the same or even a little bit more street impact. But at the end of the day, the IROC's going to be the one they remember. Uh, this is the LB9 uh, V8, and it was a sea change in 1985. It replaced the HO. Uh, 305 as the top of the line engine. And again, they didn't have a tranny. They didn't have a transmission to mate it to because nothing could handle the torque, but they did put kind of a hot rotted four speed in it that would chirp the rear tires and uh, in a straight line didn't lose much to the stick. But again, yeah, couldn't keep up with the Mustang. Uh, you see the intake runners on the side, very computer controlled, metered out air, uh, worked in such a way to create a lot of low end torque. And uh, eventually this intake unit on the 350 with more tuning and tweaking uh, would finally lay waste to the Mustang. Uh, you see everything nice and neat under the hood. You see the big dual prong intake on this thing, pulling air from under the bumper. You got the fog lights there, uh, AC compressor. Uh, there were a few packages you could get that were pure race. There was the one LE, uh, and it came without AC and basically window cranks, and what's kind of a super secret race car package. Uh, but for the most part, this car is equipped as most of these cars would have come, and uh, that is fairly well equipped with things like air conditioning and, uh, you know, a nice stereo and power windows and locks and that sort of crap. So uh, I'm going to pause it there for a minute and we will hop inside and look around and then go for a spin. Uh, you know All right, so let's have a look inside this thing. I didn't want to put the paper mat down there before I did, so uh, you can have a look at just how nice the original carpet and seats and such are in this thing. Truly remarkably well-preserved 50,000-mile car, and uh, it's a real honor and a privilege to have it. I can't thank the guy who gave it to me enough. We're going to put it up on Bring a Trailer for Sale. Hope it does well, 
but uh, even if you know none of that works out at least I got to drive something that was the you know my IROC is nice and I love it but I've had to bring it back from the dead this thing was never uh, you know never deteriorated it's just a super well-kept original car original paint beautiful interior and looks very very nice all around and uh, as close to I've had to driving an original you know without feeling that the thing has been restored it's just a nice feeling and you could see why these things are so uh, desirable now Gen Z is eaten them alive they're the main buyer of uh, these IROCs and I don't I get it you know being one of them uh, this car had such an impact at the time uh, you see the door panel with the carpeting on the bottom the velour stuff sort of on the top uh, that big long armrest going into this interesting panel which is very compartmentalized 1980 stuff where you have the pull handle your door lock stuff your uh, mirror adjust and whatnot interesting that there's no map pocket uh, you know you can get a wide variety of seats in this thing different fabrics uh, some with Camaro logos you could get leather uh, probably most of them had uh, you know a velour interior like this one sort of cloth and velour and looks great the fellow who owns this is a big guy and uh, he put on these seat uh, extensions to sort of let himself fit a bit better uh, they can be removed if you want but you know if you're anything over 510, 511, you'll probably be happy they're there. They don't matter to me much because I'm a little guy. Uh, looking in the back seat, and of course that's where you'd have been sitting if you were low on the totem pole on your way to the winger concert with your buddy, you know, smoking cigarettes. And nobody smoked in this thing, at least from the sign of the lighter, which is perfect, which is shocking to me because I have no doubt that many, many cigarettes were smoked in IROCs. Uh, you can also see the condition of the weather strip is phenomenal, uh, as is the original paint but anyway uh, the Canadians in the back yeah you know they're not gonna be thrilled it's pretty tight back there but they'll make it work especially if the driver is in 6-2 and doesn't have to go all the way back uh, they do get a little ashtray in the middle God bless them uh, they get uh, lap belts and uh, the 6 by 9 speakers are buried behind those side panels and uh, can be blasting you know rat round and round or white snake into their ears as they go so uh, you also get a nice little carpet pad there for the driver and at this point I'll put down the uh, the paper mat we'll hop in and start it up a shame you couldn't get a stick in these until later on but again GM just didn't have their crap together to have one that would work with the torque this engine had 215 horsepower uh, 225 uh, foot-pounds was too much for him uh, they also once well, fire it up and get it going man does it run nice get my seatbelt on now so we don't have to deal with it later Everything feels hard at my age. Although I will say this, when I hop in this car and fire it up, I feel like I'm 20 pounds thinner. I've got all my hair. <sighs> you know, women still find me appealing and I don't feel like the old bastard that I am. And that is a nice thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, the dash had been redesigned by 85, looked a bit more sleek and modern. Big overhang, kind of a strange dashboard really, uh, but it looks you know, fine, you got your speakers up top. Uh, over here you got your headlight controls, your fog light controls, your vents, you got a full set of gauges, or at least enough. Uh, water temp, uh, voltage, uh, your 85 mile an hour speedo, which is ludicrous. This thing would run in the mid 130s, so you're not registering any speed past 85, which is strange. Uh, voltmeter, tack. Uh, the earlier Zs had a double prong gauge with um, kilometers and miles an hour, which was neat looking uh, but impossible to read uh, you also have a tilt steering column you got your wiper control with the cruise control stuff uh, works great I like it kind of tilted down here uh, here's your lighter and I was I mean again <laughs> I mean, that is very un-80s, the fact that this thing has not been used to smoke uh, cigarettes. Uh, your center vents, your extended range stereo, uh, very simple climate control in this. Uh, you could get Delco Bose or just Delco. This is a pretty high-end Delco unit with the equalizer, the uh, Dolby noise reduction. Works well. You see that is power antenna that went up. And what do we have? 
cheap trick, so there we go. Not a bad thing for this car. Uh, here's your four-speed automatic with overdrive, your window switches. Uh, this one has the very cool cocaine clock, as I called it. You always need a place to chop that up. Uh, very, very neat stuff, and actually still working, although the little second hand has sort of fallen off at this point, but the clock itself is working. Uh, there's your e-brake. Here's your center console. There's the reg. There's the build codes, all the RPO codes that uh, you can see what it had. There'll be a picture of that in the listing. Uh, this one has a nice set of books and some service records which it which is yeah, good to see uh, you see the z28 irock z badge uh, what's interesting is when they got rid of the z28 part and just made it an irock z uh, the interior people obviously didn't get the memo and uh, it still showed z28 irock z but the z28 part was gone by 87 and uh, irock was all you had uh, you got some sun visors up here very simple stuff uh, very nice little mirror that you flip down for day night and uh, you know everything looking pretty cool uh, automatic overdrive label on the center console uh, it's surprising to me how firm the shifting is in this car and you see just 50,000 miles on this thing which is great but the shifting is very very firm it reminds me of the Firebird I had that had a shift kit I mean it'll chirp second gear uh, right from the factory and of course a big part of that was the horsepower war with the Mustang. You know, they knew they couldn't put a stick in it, uh, so they had to make the uh, tranny as absolutely hot shifting as they could, and they did. Now, I did the window in this myself. As you know, Dalton is long gone. And let's see how I did on the window. Yeah, you know, I think I did pretty damn well. Yeah, you got a little bit of uh, what is that? That's actually vent stuff, so. Let me hit the uh, defrost. See how that, yeah, there it goes. Cleans right up. Look at the job that I did. Way better than Dalton. You know, and I didn't really put that much time into it. I just cared. That was the only thing that I did. Uh, goes down the road nice and smooth, even with the stiffer suspension and the springs. Uh, it actually works out pretty damn well. Uh, it, you know, it, it, I just did an E63 Mercedes the other day, and I was shocked at how it could be such a docile driver that you could take to the grocery store while at the same time do a three second zero to 60. Well, this is a cousin to that. Obviously, it's more of a seven second zero to 60. Uh, but despite having great handling suspension that would outperform the Mustang at the track, uh, you could drive it to the grocery store without really feeling like you were in some kind of a hot rod. Didn't jar your spine. You do have the sort of low Camaro seating position, not quite like you're in a Formula V car, but uh, definitely not as upright as you are in the Mustang. Uh, but it became a nice cruiser, as well as having the oomph it needed when you really wanted it. And that's one of the things that made these IROC special. They're starting to get a little heat in it. Let's give it a go here. <laughs> There's the chirp. I mean, the tranny of this thing is very tight. No shift kit. This is the way it came from Chevy. And uh, after it breaks loose the tires, it'll actually chirp second gear. I absolutely love that. I love that. And uh, that was going back then to those horsepower wars in the early to mid 80s where they just, Ford and Chevy, were absolutely at each other. And uh, it was a big deal. I think eventually Chevy won the day, uh, but I bet Ford sold more Mustangs. You know, they were just too. At yeah, you got into that 350 I Rock. It was like eight grand more than a Mustang GT MX five liter coupe, uh, which was just about as fast. So, you know, if you were a poor kid in the 80s, that's what you wanted to have: uh, speed per dollar. The Mustang beat it out, uh, but far and away the Camaro was cooler. So, uh, look. Anyway, there it is. I'm going to be stuck in traffic now. There's no point in dicking around with that. I'll get on the interstate and give you a little run there. Uh, but this is a 50,000 mile 85 IROC Z Z28, all original as it came. 
Very rare to find one in these condi this condition. I mean, these things were just brutalized. As they got less expensive, you know, kids bought them and just beat the crap out of them and destroyed them. And uh, that's a big reason why uh, the values are going up today on the really nice original ones because there just aren't that many of them left. And this is one of them. So uh, it'll be on Bring a Trailer. Great cool car. Uh, if you have any interest, go ahead and bid on it. You should. You're not going to be disappointed. And uh, otherwise, I will see you with the next one. Let's give it a little bit of a jam here. I'm going to beat this Audi. See if I can't get back over to the right. Great throttle response out of that tune port. Man, does this bring back memories. And I didn't feel like a million bucks driving this car. What a great connector piece. You know, and you couldn't buy a 69Z28 for anything approaching this money, but you can still sort of have the same feeling of panache that you do driving that around. Yeah, you're not going to get the boomers going crazy for you, but the Gen X guys, they're going to be way more interested in this at the Cars and Coffee than they will in the 60s stuff. And uh, I get it because I'm one of them. So anyway, thank you very much for having a look. Really appreciate it. And we will see you with the next one. Take care.